How cool would it be to make $1,000 per day trading Forex and being able to do this in only a couple of hours? In this video, I sit down and I interview a 15-time funded professional prop trader on his $1,000 per day formula. He explains the math behind how it works and the entire strategy, including entry criteria, exit criteria, and the risk management strategy with examples. Now, just to disclaim, you may not make $1,000 per day like he does. However, I'm gonna interview him and he's gonna break down his entire $1,000 per day formula. Okay, Yuya, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, why don't you go ahead and explain this of how people could make $1,000 per day uh, Forex trading. Why don't you explain the math behind this, the risk management, and then uh, if you could show us even the strategy that you've done. I know you've helped a lot of other people as well. That'd be awesome. Yeah, so first things first, you know, um, I personally want to give thanks to the prop firm scenes, right? Prop firms are essentially companies that will, you know, personally fund you up to, you know, some I've seen up to a million dollars as well too, you know, but typically what got me started, you know, in making, you know, a good amount of profit was these prop firms back, you know, when I was a college student, but also, you know, just trying to find a income, I didn't have, you know, 50K, 100K to put into a personal live account. I only had a thousand to 2000. So these prop firms allowed me to use their capitals, other people's money to leverage, you know, my knowledge of what I've been doing in the Forex market and allowed me to use bigger capital. I believe the more capital you have, the more you can make, right? Essentially at the end of the day. And a lot of things of our human psychology that affects us is the amount that we make, right? For someone to make 1% on a $1,000 account is totally different from um, making 1% uh, on a 100K account, right? The feelings, the dopamine feelings you get on a $1,000 account versus a $100,000 account is totally different, even though it's the same percentage, you know, in gain, right? So the whole concept is obviously the more money you can trade with, the better success psychologically you'll have so that key aspects you know of you know making a thousand dollars a day is first getting funded and you have to pass sometimes a two-step verification there are other places that also you know give you you know a funded account as well to instantly and there's other um, services that also provide you know free funded accounts or not free funded accounts but they have passed your challenge for you and essentially you'll get a funded account so the whole goal right now is to get a funded account once you get a funded account making a thousand dollars a day becomes a lot easier than trying to do it with a thousand dollar account so once getting funded so you get funded essentially so that's the number one key right and then the target goal is one percent a day right so Yes, you know, um, sometimes you see big payouts of people making 50, 20, you know, 100,000. But the one thing that I always tell my students is that's not something that's very, that can be, you know, sustainable. And also you can't create consistency off of that. To ask someone to make 50 to 100% a month is asking quite a lot, right? They're putting their account in jeopardy, but also their psychology in jeopardy as well to, you know, that's why essentially, imagine if you had a million dollar account making 1% a day. That's $10,000 a day, right? Just understand that trading is a long-term thing. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Even though it sounds cliche, you have to really put that in your head and realize that, you know, baby steps are going to give you those big results, right? Consistency is always going to pay off. You can tell you can't you can't tell me otherwise that consistency is never going to create profitability, right? So essentially, at the end of the day, the more consistent you are, the more profit you'll be. Um, so the first step, get funded. Second step, one percent a day, you know. And then the third thing is essentially you have two types of entries, right? Impulse entries for a one to two. And then second chance trades for a one to one. So I'm gonna dive deeper into these um, number three and four, but essentially these are like the four steps, right? Getting a funded account, the goal 1% a day, impulse entries for a one to two and second chance trades for a one to one. So I'm gonna go over some live examples of what you can do, right? And I always teach this first, but you always wanna trade at those high volume times, right? Whether it's London Open, New York Open, or the NYSE Open. So the first example, what we have right here is the NYSE Open, right? So we have a range created, and this, this pair is GJ. So we have a range created, 
we can kind of clearly see there was a range created during the New York session, right? And then essentially what happened was that the high got taken out. So essentially a strategy I like to use is obviously when a range does get broken, a high does get broken, you can enter impulse entries. So the first example that I'm going to talk about is when your impulse entry doesn't go for a one to one and essentially, you know, ends up stopping you out of wherever you entered, you know? So right here, typically you have the five minute candle, right? To say you took a, you know, impulse entry right here, and you were trying to go for, you know, a one to two. And typically I just keep it right under, you know, this candle. And you can kind of clearly see it's a 10 pips, you know, stop loss, which is very ideal. So you see that and typically you're trying to go for 20 pips, right? You can kind of see the impulse entry we took essentially of the breaking of the high only went up a nine pips, right? And we weren't able to get our full one to two essentially at the end of the day. And the reason why I'm going for one to two is that impulse entries were risking only 0.5%. So entries equal 0.5% risk. So essentially on a 100K account, it's just $500, right? So we're risking 500 to make a thousand. So that's the first, right? Impulse entries. When your impulse entries don't work, and sometimes they don't, right? Impulse entries are aggressive. Um, they're dangerous at times, but they also can pay out because you're essentially hoping that the volume and the volatility will create momentum for your impulse entries. And typically depending on the pair, but you usually do see anywhere from 10 to 25 pips on impulse entries. Sometimes you don't, so you can't always count on that happening, but then obviously you have to take risk in order to make profits in Forex, right? But as long as it's calculated with proper risk management, there's nothing wrong with taking impulse entries. So we do get stopped out here with the impulse entry. So typically what I like to do is essentially after getting stopped out, so this entry right here, um, essentially got stopped out with this five minute candle. I like to typically go back to, you know, the bigger time frame, like, you know, if I took it on the five, which I did, 15 or 30 it always the next second chance trade always has to be on a time frame above whatever you lost on so if it took on the five it has to be at least a 15 minute time frame you take it on if you took it on the 15 it has to be at least the 30 right so in this case right here i'm looking at the 15 so looking at the 15 uh, minute time frame what i noticed is that the impulse entries on the five minute looked good but then ended up taking out highs and as we saw in the five minute, what it did was create a doji, right? And then usually, you know, a doji means that there's some indecision, but also some equilibrium in the market, which could end up becoming, in this case, even though we had a bullish push, seller is coming into the market and flipping the market, right? So using what we see on the 15 minute, we see this candle right here, right? So we have to wait for any type of candle closure on the next time frame. So seeing this, even though it's not the most ideal bearish candle, it is still a bearish candle. And what you would do is your second chance trade, you would enter off of the bigger time frame with stop loss right above here, which typically for me with GJ is a little bit bigger, but I know that, you know, typically when, you know, you get faked out on impulse entries, that manipulation was created. So essentially that fake out pattern will come into fruition. Plus you get momentum in the market that typically, you know, the the second chance trades you're barely in drawdown you really go right into profit right if you're executing it properly so in this case right here i have a 29 pip stop loss let's just say 30 pips i would go for my one to one at 30 pips right so 30 pips is kind of perfectly where i would typically like to put my stop loss or my tp right right at the bottom of that range that it was in previously so in this case right here the reason why we go for a one to one is essentially we're risking on this type of trade this is our second chance trade so second chance trade equals 1.5%, right? So 1.5% is my second chance trade. You know, I like to typically, you know, risk 1.5% because essentially at the end of the day, if I do lose this and then lose this as well, I'm only down 2% for the day, you know? And um, to say that, I'm going to have, you know, let's just say five consecutive days where I do lose and essentially hit my 10% 10, 10 mark, which, you know, the $10,000 max daily law or the max loss is most likely, un I'm not going to say it's unlikely, but, you know, there's a very low chance of that. And I'd rather count on myself to know that I won't let that happen. You know, and I can most likely hit, you know, 
um, at least out of those five consecutive days, I'll have a few wins at least on my worst days, right? So the second chance trade right here is a 1.5%. And we're only going for a one-to-one, -one, right? The first impulse entry was a one-to-two, but this one right here is just a one-to-one -one, because essentially a one-to-one -one with the 1.5 risk is um, you know, a 1.5% gain, which equivalent in a 100K account is $1,500. Then you minus the $500 you lost, you get the $1,000 that you were aiming for, you know, which is the 1% per day. Hey, if you'd like to trade with Yuya in the morning live and copy his exact same trades, then go on over to fundedtraderfasttrack.com. So right here, you can clearly see the reason why there was momentum that was started was that a high was taken. When a high or a low is taken and then it creates a fake out, usually means that manipulation occurred, which is the volatility. And that formula that I always say, volume plus volatility equals momentum, is what we call right here is the momentum that is pushing. Yes, you know, you can catch this huge move and we can keep going. But in this case right here, I'm so focused, especially on a funded account, is 1% a day. Because the whole goal of a funded account is consistent growth to build good habits so you can take all the profits you've made on the funded account and transfer it over to a live account. You know, I always say this, that if you don't have at least $35,000 um, to put in a live account, I highly recommend just focusing on prop firms until you can save up enough money for that, especially with the um, prop firm profits you make and then put it into a live account. So that's typically what I would do in this situation right here. This is just an example of an impulse entry and a second chance entry. Next, I want to show you a possible impulse entry that, you know, went one to two and you didn't have to take a second chance trade. And you're asking, how is a $500 risk trade going to turn into a thousand dollars? Well, essentially when you go one, one to two. So looking at this right here, we have the London open right here, you know, and then essentially it did push out and break this low right here. So as this low was breaking, we have our range, you know, so we waited for a range break and we got that. The low broke and this is where we entered impulse trades as the low was breaking and the stop loss, all it is, is right above this level right here. We can say, let's just say 12 pips, right? So typically on an impulse trade, I go for a one to two. So we're looking for about 24 to 25 pips. So in this case right here, you can clearly see within about five to 10 minutes, your TP was hit right away off of this impulse. And these are an example, right? This case right here, we, we lost steam. The momentum wasn't strong enough and it died down. But in this case right here, when the low or high was broken, you saw the momentum pick up, right? You're never gonna know exactly when impulse trades are gonna work in your favor, but having this impulse entry plus a second chance trade, you're, you're basically prepared for anything, you know? And it allows you to be very flexible with the market and allow you to react. So that's part of the reason why, like, the strategy of risk management is one of the most important strategies of them all, right? Having proper risk management and understanding um, percentages and numbers is a huge advantage to you, especially when you're trading, because it's better to know what you're winning and what you're losing in your head psychologically, so you can move on from the next, move on to the next trade. But also, just be able to manage your emotions a lot better. At the end of the day, a lot of the time, psychologically, um, our mind wanders and goes everywhere when we don't really know what's happening, and that's usually because we don't know what we're losing and what we're ri risking as well too. So that's a key component. So this is just an example of an impulse entry, you know, that works our way. Last example right here, I want to just talk about, you know in this case is just more of a clear um, picture of what we call a fake out pattern, right? So we have a range, you know, a created. So we have ranges that was created during the Asia session. And what I'm looking at is right here. So all the way up to the London Open, right? So essentially London Open, what it did was push up, take out highs, right? Let's just say in this case right here, we, we weren't, you know, um, taking any trades, right? And this is just an example because this five minute trade didn't really have a down wick. And like I talked about a lot is that if, you know, a bullish candle does not have like a down wick to it. And then obviously the same thing goes for a bearish candle, but you know, I typically don't like these type of, um, these kind of candles that don't have a down wick when it's bullish, right? So something like this, I don't like just because it didn't, it didn't tell me that anything was taken from down here. And I always use the metaphor of like a slingshot, right? When you pull a slingshot back, the farther back you pull it, the farther it will go. It's the same thing with candlesticks, right? 
um, since this one opened and literally just pushed up, usually typically in my head, I think manipulation, right? When it doesn't create a low or a high, the wicks are like your best friends. It, it, it gives you a sense of mind that um, you're not gonna get faked out or manipulated typically, right? So in this case right here, we did get this strong push, but it didn't really have a down wick. So it made sense. You're like, you know what? I'm a little hesitant. I'm not quite sure what I'll do. I'd rather wait for like a bigger time frame, you know, to close. And then essentially, you know, potentially look to see what happens. So um, we do get the close, right? Um, right here. But notice how that candle, the way it closed, was back into that range. So this was just the high that was taken out, right? So at that at that moment, now what I'm looking for in my head is, ooh, potentially a fake out pattern might occur. And all I'm looking for is essentially a bearish candle that breaks the low. And we get that, a bearish candle right here, creating a fake out pattern. And you'll notice the 30 minute candle. And I believe that we took this as a group on my, um, uh, on my mentorship as well too, where we take this, you know, we took this trade together during the London session where there's a beautiful 30 minute rejection candle, right? Something that I really like to see and essentially took out the high, created a rejection indicating to me that this level was rejected really hard. So, you know, there's a lot of sellers in the market. So what I like to do is typically after the close, wait for a small pullback and then enter a trade. So in this case right here, since it's your first trade, you could enter a 0.5 trade, but typically once I see the impulse entries happen and then the fake out occur, I like to just enter my 1% risk that I usually do and I'll enter the 1% and then typically right here, since I'm looking at a very big wick on the 30 minute, I typically would look at that 15 minute chart that we have and then I would place my stop loss right above that level. Um, typically, I don't like to see too much you know, a stop loss bigger than 15 pips on GJ. So typically maybe, you know, in this situation, I'll look maybe on a smaller time frame, and then look for more of a reasonable stand, um, stop loss for my standard. And right here, after seeing that 15 minute close right here, I would probably put my stop loss right above that level at 17 pips. So, you know, a little bit bigger than what I like, but still yet, you know, it's still manageable. So 17 pips right here, going for my once in one with the 1% risk, you get that, you know, perfectly right here. You get that quick, um, probably took about, you know, let's just say 20 to 25 minutes, but that's still okay. You know, that's within, you know, the whole, the open time, you know, there's volume on your side. So this is just another example, you know, so essentially at the end of the day, you know, um, the key to, you know, trading and making a thousand dollars a day is having a funded account and just staying consistent with 1% a day. You know, it might, it might be a little bit, um, at first, but our problems as human beings is that we compare ourselves too much to other people and other things as well, too. When we start looking at other people's results and seeing how much they make, you get personally affected and psychologically affected. So you have to just stay in your lane and just realize that 1% a day with a high probability can add up to become a lot, right? And we are always focusing on consistency. Don't always go for the home run. To say that someone can hit a home run every single pitch is, is literally impossible, right? Base hits, base hits, base hits. Sometimes you'll hit the home runs, right? But the home runs have to come depending on the type of pitch, the type, depending on the type of swing you do. So the right situation at the right time, right? And essentially another thing that I like to say is we need luck on our side. And sometimes luck happens when we get those big trades, but essentially at the end of the day, luck is when opportunity meets preparation, right? The opportunity, you never know when it's gonna come, but you always have to be prepared. So trading at specific times, you know, trading the same way and being consistent, and it all comes down with consistency, right? So when you combine all those things together, that's how you can create a consistent cash flow of $1,000 a day trading a funded account without using any of your money, borrowing another company's money for your own success and profitability. Hey, this was pretty good stuff, right? Well, the next thing that you need to do is watch this video right here. It's my number one Forex trading secret that is backed by data that can almost triple your odds of having success, increase your odds of success by 312% if you just do this one simple thing. Check it out right now.